What up, peeps? Tony Baker here, back with another movie review. This time I'm reviewing Pixar's Soul, and I'm doing the recap. So I'm gonna do a quick review at the beginning, and then, spoiler alert, I'm gonna do a complete recap, and if you don't wanna get spoiled, get your ass out of the video. Then you can come back for the recap. Now, to the review part. Pixar's track record is unprecedented in movies. Like, Pixar has a phenomenal track record. They have far more blemish, they have far less blemishes than they do crowning achievements. Matter of fact, the only, the only Pixar movies that I saw that I didn't really care for, even, I can say nothing was trash. Like, Cars was a little bit too childish for me. The sequels, in all fairness, I didn't even watch. I saw the first one, I was like, oh, it's for the kids, and I left. You know what I mean? So I was like, all right. I haven't seen Monsters University. I haven't seen Brave. I haven't seen The Good Dinosaur. And I also didn't see Onward, which I need to watch. That poor movie came out in, in prime pandemic strike, and it just got, oh, I got a raw deal. But I've heard good things, for the most part, for Onward. But those are the ones I haven't seen. Even the ones low on the totem pole are still good. With Pixar, man, you know they got the access codes to your emotions, your tear ducts. They always gonna get you, and Pixar knows how to get the adult. They go right past the kids, straight to your soul. Soul is no different. Soul is about a guy named Joe that he's all about music. He wants to be a musician. He wants to be a jazz musician, touring the world, playing the music, because once he plays the piano, he's in the zone bliss. He's out of here. I get it. I'm a dreamer as well, as we all are. You know what I mean? I'm a dreamer. And so, you know, he's teaching music at a high school or whatever, but that's not his passion. You know, he's just doing this to pay the bills, get by. I can still kind of thrive in, you know, my love of music, but you know, it's just something, you know, he's not even long term. At the, you know, he's just like, you know, substitute fill in McGee. And then they offer him like a longer term position. He's just like, all right, cool. You know, he's not excited, excited like he would be if he got like a, a touring gig or, you know, a band membership. So his mom is like, yes, yes, take that. But he tries out for this, this great jazz musician. She's looking for a piano player. So he tries out for her. She's like, yo, come back tonight for the show we're doing. I want you to come back tonight and then I'll let you know then. Big opportunity. Joe is super excited. On his way home, he falls in the sewer. Out of here. His soul is in the nether. So now it's like, yo, he's going to the great beyond. And he's like, yo, yo, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. I got a, I got a big show tonight. So when he's in that afterlife and like, you know, he's running around trying to avoid going into the great beyond. And so he's fronting, he's lying his way. He's, he's a fraud in, in this little after soul world, just trying not to go to the great beyond. So he's doing what he got to do. He ends up meeting a, what they have there. This movie is kind of complicated. If you're not paying attention, you can get lost in the sauce. So they have these, soul things that create the things that make us who we are, the personality quirks, the traits. And so he meets this one that is like, it's not too impressed with anything going on on earth for her or him to wanna go out there and live a full life. Nothing is like, eh, there's no spark for me. There's no spark. So she's like, well, I'm not really in a hurry to go to earth and live a life. There's nothing that's interesting. And so, and mind you, this 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 little soul piece is like a millennia years old. Not impressed. And Joe's like, please, I, I gotta get back. And so, scrambles back, he ends up in a cat in, in 22, which is that soul spark, ends up in him. So they're going through life like that. So he's like, yo, you gotta play the piano tonight. Please don't mess this up for me. And meanwhile, he's a cat. So he's just, meow, 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 meow. And so people are like, what the hell is this? So to wrap this review up, this movie, does a great job in connecting to people that are dreamers, people that, you know, are looking for your spark, have found your spark, are out here living in your spark. This is for you. So this movie connected to me because, you know, I've never been interested in the lifestyle of, you know, I'm gonna do this for a living. You know, I'm gonna go to college, get my degree and do this. Mind you, that's great. But for me, you know, I've always wanted to act and create and be an artist and like, you know, that's the stuff that, that I'm passionate about. And, you know, it's uncertain. You gotta keep going. There's, you know, there's a gamble to it. It may work, it may not, but you gotta go for it. And that's what this 
movie is about, for the most part, but there's an underlying message there as well. Jamie Foxx was great as Joe. Tina Fey was great as 22. Great voice cast. Uh, I love how they made New York a character in this in this film. Like they they very much paid attention to New York and the vibe and the style and the multiculturalness of New York that you rarely see when they film stuff about New York. You rarely see how diverse New York really is. Like when you really go to New York, everybody's represented in New York. But I feel like they don't always reflect that when you watch stuff about New York. Look at Sex in the City. Friends, like come on man, this is New York. You know what I mean? So I like how they nailed that because New York is a fantastic city. I don't know if you've ever been there. If you haven't been, go check it out. I really like the family dynamic between Joe and his mom. Characters were warm. I like the way Joe looked aesthetically. He looked like a regular guy. He looked like a, a real guy. Even, even when he went to the soul world and how, you know, they made it into like a cartoon. You could feel it. It was very tranquil when they were in that part of town. I really enjoyed that. Pixar has done it again, man. Like it really connected to me on that level. And I'm gonna give soul Four saxophones out of five. Yeah, I like soul, man. It's another feather in Pixar's cap. It's one of their best. I'm gonna give it that. I wish they would've, I wish they would have played more music, to be honest. I would have liked to have seen more musical, you know, numbers and performances. I think they could have sat in that for a little bit longer. Like when he's on the piano, give us, give us more piano tunes. Even one part where he was really taking it in, I feel like they could have really. They could have really made like a nice little piano medley right there. Kind of like how they did with La La Land. Like, you know, when, when Ryan Gosling would just drift off and then you would, I thought that was great. I feel like that was an opportunity for Soul to do that as well. Anyway, four out of five. But let's get to the recap. So Joe, you know, he don't want to be teaching these kids, man. These bratty kids, you know what I'm saying? This kid right here has got the talent, but she like, man, I don't want to do this, but I, I do want to do this. Don't nobody got time for the confusion? And then these kids are just talentless. They don't care about the music class, but this one, you got the real potential, but you, you're squandering it away because of your attitude. But these cats, they don't care about this. I care about this. Shut up, Mr. Baker. Hey, man, you better watch out. And so he's dealing with all of this. Then he gets a gig, his boy, Quest Love. Quest Love is the voice. You know, he rolls up, yo, man, you know what I'm saying? She wants to hear you play. Fill in the night. Fill in the night. This is a once in a lifetime. You got to come. He's like, man, I got to, I got to play for her. So he rolls up. He all excited. He gets in the zone. He playing the piano. She's singing. She looking at him. He playing. He's like, yo, this dude really playing back here. And so he killed the killed the audition. He's like, yo, come back tonight. No, I don't think it was tonight. I think it was like later in the week. Come back, and then you gonna play for me on the actual show, and then we going from there. And he's like, man, let's go. You know, meanwhile, you know what I'm saying, the school was like, we gonna offer you a permanent position. He like, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> great. Tells his mom, his mom is excited, because dreams don't pay the bills. Dreams don't pay the bills. How many people can relate to that? When our parents are like, they may not get what we're doing. They may not support what we're doing 100% because they're scared for us to be like, that's gonna be a hard life financially. How you gonna get by? They love it when we have something more concrete to where we can, you know, provide for ourselves or our families or whatever the case may be. And you know, dreams really don't pay the bills. They can. If you stick to it and you work hard, the dreams can definitely pay the bills. But in the meantime, so you kind of feel mom on that a little bit. But he was just like, man, forget that. I got the showcase. I'm about to kill it on this piano. I'm gonna be on tour. I'm gonna be killing. He all excited, falls in the sewer. How many people fall in the sewer though? Come on, man. Let's... Who, who's falling in the sewer in 2021? Really? You that excited? I can see tripping, tripping over something or stepping in dog poop, but the sewer? I can see if you walking backwards and you're on your phone, but who's walking backwards on their phone? You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, they kind of forced it with that one. It'd been better off if he got mugged violently and, you know, stabbed or shot up. You know what I'm saying? Or police brutality. Throw that in there. You know what I'm saying? Now he's in the coma because the cops was doing too much. They thought he was protesting peacefully. And he was like, man, get him. And then, then, you know, but the sewage fall in. Anyway, he's in the coma. His soul is in the nether. He's like, nah, man, I ain't going to the great beyond. He scrambles. He starts lying. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of these guys, you know. I'm a mentor. <laughs> so let's get, let's get this going. 
He was swindling his way in and out of there. And is is it that easy to swindle your way in and out of there? Then he had this one, this one soul worker that was all about the math. And he's like, the numbers are off. He was on his ass. I like that. He was like, nah, man. It's a soul missing, and I'm gonna find out who it is. He'd be like, man, you take your job too seriously. I love this job, and my count is never off. Somebody is missing. He was on He was on the case. He was like, something's off. So then Joe comes across, you know, 22. And 22 is not impressed with nothing. I've seen it all. I'm not inspired to do none of this soul crap. There's no spark for me. I'm just here, you know what I'm saying? No passion. You're like, yo, man, just, just, Let's go back and like, you know, just just come with me so I can, you know, get my get my life back, get my soul back. Nah, I ain't feeling none of that. So they end up, there are certain people in this world that get so caught up in their spark. They find a place of complete euphoria while they do it. And so therefore, they go into like the soul nether and they go in there and this is one particular soul, he collects lost souls, because you can get lost. When you're out there, you, you know, you don't know what your spark is. So he's collecting lost souls. But in reality, he's still alive. He's still connected to the real world, flipping the sign. He's flipping the sign on the corner of Manhattan, just working it, flipping it. And he's in a euphoric state so much that he's in between realms. And so they use that guy to be able to channel Joe back into the living. Because they had to go sideways because he couldn't just hop back into Earth because he didn't have the, the pass. You gotta have a pass to get back to Earth. I don't know if you know that when you die, you wanna come back, you gotta have a pass. You gotta have a badge. You gotta have, even when you die, there's badges out here. It's paperwork, it's documents, counts. People gonna be on your ass. It's debts to be paid. So they use the Euphoria guy to come back, but he done fumbled with 22, so now he's the cat. She's Joe, and then Joe is like, you know, she gotta learn how to walk and move. This is her first time on Earth. And then Joe is in the cat, you know, and then the people are looking. It's a comfort cat. So, you know, the hospital had the comfort cat. So now Joe stole the comfort cat from the comfort cat lady. And she like, wait, wait, the cat. And she passionate about the cat. She was excited, the comfort cat. They scramble out of the hospital, booty out, you know what I'm saying? You know the hospital booty out joint. You ever had the booty out on? Now they make the booty outs, made it like this paper material. Cause I remember I went to get my skin checked and they they just rip, they ripped like the, the, the paper booty out joints and they just had me in there. They ripped all my clothes off. I was just like, hey man, why don't you just have me in there naked then? What was the point of the paper mache outfit if you were just gonna rip it off just to look at my skin? But that's neither here nor there. So they get out the hospital, they go back to Joe's apartment, they scrambling, getting it, getting it back together, because he has to do this gig. He has to do this gig. The, the kid with talent comes to his apartment. How'd the kid with talent from the music class know where the teacher lived? How'd the kid with talent know where the teacher lived? I never in my life knew where my teachers lived. Never. You know what I'm saying? Not unless they get, I knew where Miss Griffin lived, but Miss Griffin wasn't any of my teachers. She was just already a neighbor that happened to be a teacher. My teachers, as far as I'm concerned, they lived at the school. They came out of the drawer every day. Like, oh, here they go. You know what I'm saying? Because you looked at teachers like they weren't real human beings. Like, they didn't go shopping. They didn't have a life outside of school. When you a kid, you're like, oh, Miss Message. You know, she just live in the parking lot. You just picture your teacher sitting in the car and waiting until the next morning to go back into the school. No life. They in there grading papers. You, all you care about is school. Anyway, so the kid shows up. I think I'm quitting. Like, why are you gonna quit? Meanwhile, this is 22 talking to the kid. And 22 is taking it in, like listening to what the kid's saying. Like, yo, but you really love this. But nah, I hate it, but I love it. Watch this. And she starts playing. Like, you're good at this. You love it. <laughs> no, I don't, but yes, I do. Kid was confused. You know you love this shit. Get your ass out of here, kid. But meanwhile, 22 was like, yo, that's kind of dope. 22 is taking it all in. She's like, yo, all right, I see what's going on out here. I kind of like this. Then when 22 had pizza for the first time, pizza's the game changer. They need to go up there in the nether or whatever it's called and give pizza to the souls. That's going to be like, oh, they got this down there? Everybody going to be jumping in then. You know what I'm saying? Pizza in New York? Come on, man. Pizza. And so they doing all this. Moms are still upset. Like, you, man, you better take this job. Like, mom, you know what I'm saying? I have to do this. Joe and his mom, even though it's 22 inside Joe, they have a great moment of communication when she's just like, you know, I don't want you to get lost in the dream and not really 
live your life to the fullest. You know, I don't want I don't want you to end up like your father. And it's just like, you know, that whole dynamic. And they touch on like the relationship he had with his father. And it was just a great moment of understanding, like, yo, just I just need a suit for this gig. And like, you know, I you you're the best tailor around. I just need this. And she realized that, you know, he is passionate about this. And they come to that understanding that it is important to him. And it's more than just, you know, a silly dream. And that really hit my soul. I was just like, man, I feel it, man. And and, and to have your parent or your loved one come to grips in, in an understanding of what you really want for your life, oh, it was a great moment. And I love how his mom looked. She had the natural hair and the short. She looked like a real person. I was just like, this was a great scene, man. My eyeballs were jiggling a little bit. Mom comes through in the clutch. He has a great blue suit on, you know what I'm saying? They on the L train. When it came down to it, he killed it at the showcase. He killed it. And then he was like, he asked the, the band leader like, yo, uh, what's next? What are we doing now? He's like, I'm going home. We got another show tomorrow. That's when he realized that, you know, it was dope, but that's all to it. You know, we do a show and then we go home and then we just do another show. You're only funky as your last cut. So he's just like, man, you know. And then that's when he went home and really started reflecting on the pieces of his life. He had the trinkets that he had in his pocket from earlier and it was just like, mind you, this is after he already went back into the, the soul nether and then came back into his original body. And then he went back again to get 22 because 22 became a lost soul. I forgot all about that. 22 became a lost soul, so he had to go save 22. And then he was gonna sacrifice himself so 22 can experience a full life. And I was like, I was about to be pissed if they were gonna do that. And I was like, so he gonna die, man? Forget this movie, man. But then he ended up getting a badge for what he did. And so he was able to get a second chance at life. But now he's gonna appreciate the fullness of his life rather than just focusing on the dream and nothing else. So it was like, that was a great message in the movie. And uh, it was dope, man. Soul was a good time. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out. It's a good addition to Pixar's great resume, man. Top 10 Pixar for me, top 10. Probably not top five, because I got The Incredibles in there. Coco was in there, Toy Story 3 and like 1 and 2. And then, you know what I mean, like uh, Monsters Inc. But anyway, top 10 Pixar movie, please watch it. It's streaming right now. That's my review of Soul. If you saw Soul, let me know what you thought in the comments section below. What are you ranking in Pixar's canon of, uh, of great films? Let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and as usual, we out here.